Welcome to using Cisco Unified Intelligence Center CUIC version 11.5. This getting started video is the first of a series of videos on the product. In this video you're going to learn how to navigate the report administration pages and how to generate and filter stock reports. Other videos in the series are going to include customizing reports, permalinks, using dashboards, value lists and collections, and understanding users, groups, and permissions. Before we dive into the application itself, let's just position CUIC in the UCCE environment. As you'll see in this slide, UCCE consists of either a single server or cluster, which integrates with the UCCE environment to connect to what are we refer to as data sources. These data sources will provide agent detail, agent teams, call volumes, skill groups, precision queues or trunk group detail from the ICM data source or from the CVP data source, the CVP reporting server, we'll see information concerning application detail, trunk utilization and gateway detail. It's the job of CUIC of course to render this data in a report form to a user who has this browser based access. This slide shows a configured CUIC server showing four connections to data sources. Two for UCCE, both historical and real time, and two for CVP, including courtesy callback and CVP reporting. Both of these or all of these data sources connect to the appropriate data source host in the UCC environment. Notice also that we CUIC itself has a data source containing data about the system itself. This would not contain operational data as such, but would include things like report templates, users, roles, permissions, etc. For those of you who are familiar with earlier versions of CUIC, you're going to notice a new look in version 11.5. There's a cleaner UI simpler color choices, a complete user interface redesign to make user centric flows easier and simpler. This user centric design is going to mean less learning involved and more intuitive navigation. You'll see we're now able to search for words within the reports as well as easily create a list of favorite reports for convenient access later on. We'll use this new look page for the creation and viewing of reports, for filtering report data, and for creating and viewing report permalinks. The previous release page is still going to be used for scheduling reports, creating and viewing dashboards, creating and viewing dashboard permalinks, and managing user groups and permissions. The URL for logging into the Unified Intelligence Center reporting application is HTTPS the host IP address port 8444 forward slash CUIC. From here we can access the report homepage by logging in and I'm using here CUIC admin which is our default super user and password which brings us to the CUIC home page. Notice because we are logged in as the CUIC administrator with full rights and privileges, we can access every link along the left hand side uh, as shown here. To access our stock reports, we will click on the reports link on the left hand side. Notice that we see a folder containing stock reports, which, we've, which if we open, We'll see CCE reports, CVP reports, and COIC reports, which are essentially just audit uh, trails. Opening up the CCE reports, we'll see we have all fields historical and real time, historical and real time reports for outbound option, as well as transition reports for historical and real time for those users that have been migrating from an Avaya system to Cisco. 
You'll note here that we have the ability to rename or move or delete uh, these folders. Let's open up the All Fields Historical Report to see what we can see. Notice immediately we get a list of all of the stock reports that are present with the system. These stock reports would have been imported by your deployment partner during deployment of the system. Let's go to the Agent Historical All Fields and you'll notice the star over here on the right hand side signifying that we've created this report to be a favourite. You'll see the benefit of that. Notice as a stock report, we have the ability to save it as a different report, but no ability to edit. Feature of the stock reports is that they cannot be edited. Let's open up our agent historical all fields report and take a peek. First thing you'll see is that we must choose a filter uh, and we'll look at the year to date for our report. And we'll select every agent simply because we don't have a subset collection at this point. Click run. And our report is rendered. We can expand on the agent name to associate the agent with each skill group membership and get uh, call handling details for each agent against each skill group, as you can see here. Notice that we have only a limited number of options from the editing tools in the right hand side. Those being we can, for example, examine the SQL query statement used for, as the basis for this report. We can export this service to an Excel spreadsheet if we wish. Which is very handy if you want to uh, send that uh, around the place. Let's close that. We can print the report. We can examine and alter that filter that we used to generate this report in the first place. We can refresh the report, or we can view the filter information associated with this report. A useful feature of this screen is the ability to get rid of columns that you're not really interested in at this particular point in time. If we click on this little gear wheel on the right hand side, we can simply take out, for instance, any column that we are not interested in at this time. Like so. Notice that this is happening in real time. There's no need to click and then rerun the report. It's a dynamic configuration. So by removing some or all of the columns that you're not interested in, it makes it much easier to be able to look at this report. Moving to the top window uh, and clicking on the drop down box, we would see if there were additional views for this report. In the Agent Historical All Fields stock report, we see only one view. However, watch this space because we're about to look at some other reports which may give us alternate views. Let's move back to our reports tab. This time we'll select the call type historical all fields. You'll immediately notice that again we need to choose a filter, but this time also include key criteria and field filters as well. For our date range, we'll select the year to date as per normal. Click next and we're presented with a selection of the key criteria. Again, we'll simply select all of the reporting objects, i.e. all of the call types at this point. Click Next. Now, note that we do have the ability to create some field filters. I'm going to ignore that right now, but we'll come back to that and see the benefit of that after we run this report. So our report renders and provides us with each of the same features and facilities that we had earlier. 
in particular. We can take anything out from the service level down. And essentially what this is doing is taking that same report, hiding the data that is superfluous to requirements, and leaving us just with what is essentially going to become just a service level report. Let's tidy this up a bit. And you can see against each of the call types and against each of the uh, date timestamps a service level measurement for those calls. If we look at the summary the summary here we see that the service level is ranging from you know 66 31 11 etc up to 100 supposing for argument's sake we only wanted to look at those call types which were performing poorly in other words we wanted to see only those call types which were, were returning a service level let's say less than 60 percent we can do that quite easily by revisiting the filters navigating to the field filters, selecting the field that we are interested in, and that's going to be our service level. And we're only interested in looking at entries with a service level report of less than, let's say, 60 percent will run that report now you can see those additional or earlier um, reports with service levels of 100 percent and 62 percent etc have gone and we're now only looking at those lesser um, entries with service levels somewhat less. Now the data here is limited because this is a lab environment and we don't have uh, a great number of calls going through it at this time. But hopefully you get the idea uh, of filters in a stock report. We also have the ability in the call type historical all fields to look at additional views. Call type historical daily, monthly, weekly or all fields uh, which is what we have here. Interestingly enough if we look at the answered by call type view, this same report then is rendered not in a grid view, but in a chart view. And here we can see that the 54.55% of calls uh, were handled by the pod 91H323 call type. 40, a little over or under 41% handled by the pod 91 SIP no proxy call type. So again, a fairly handy way of taking a quick snapshot uh, of the dynamics of your particular contact center. Let's return to the reports, CCE reports. And this time we'll take a real-time report. And that will be an agent real-time report. Again, we'll select all of our agents and select run and you might notice that there is little data or no data uh, present at the current time that's because we don't have any agents logged in let's take a look at what happens when we log an agent in I have a finesse system here and I will log in agent B5 This password and sign this guy in. Oops, let me correct that. Barney 5 is now logged in and not ready. Let's see what that 
might have done to our report. Let me just refresh the report. And lo and behold, Barney Fife now appears and his age and state of not ready appears. Let's go back, change him from not ready to ready, and return to the report, and we'll see his state gone from not ready to ready. In the event that Barney received a call, this age and state would of course go to talking. So there you have a brief introduction to stock reports. Let me just go back to the reports menu itself and show you one more thing. Let's take this call type real time report that we've been dealing with and click the star. Let's go back to our CCE reports, our all fields historical reports. And let's go back to our call type historical report and make it a favourite as well. And now just let's just look at the favourites. And now all of that other extraneous reports that we're not really interested of have gone. And here we can now see our stock reports that we are most interested in most of the time. Let's take a moment just to see what we will see. If we go into some of these links, we'll begin with dashboards. Notice that clicking on the dashboard link brings up the earlier release page, which allows us access to the dashboards drawer. Dashboards are web pages that display reports, schedule reports, sticky notes, and web-based elements such as URLs and web widgets. They are relevant to specific workflows and responsibilities. The dashboards you see when you open the dashboard drawer are created dashboards that you or others have created. You can see the dashboards created by others only if they have given you permission to view. Moving down to report definitions, We'll see a list of the stock report definitions. Note that each report has a report definition which re represents how data is retrieved from the data source for that report template. In addition to specifying how data is retrieved by a simple MSL, MS SQL query, a stored procedure, or anonymous block, a report definition also contains the data set that's obtained. This might include fields, filters, formulas, refresh rate, and key criteria for the report. Those data sources we saw before can be examined in real time by opening this data sources drawer. Notice here we'll see again those four report data sources and the one internal COIC data source. Let's take a quick look at the value lists drawer. Value lists contain all reportable items of the same type. For example, all agents or all still groups. CUIC is installed with stock value lists, as you can see here, and users with the value list collection designer user role can create custom value lists. A value list is associated with the key criteria field of a report, as we'll soon see. Collections are a specific subset of a particular value list. For example, all sales agent might be a collection from the agent's value. And finally, the security drawer, uh, where we would have access to the users, user groups, and user permissions. Each of these drawers will be the subject of a separate video in this series.